Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is the Earth Master out here about 9.57 p.m. That's California time here. April 2nd, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.7 earthquake uh, somewhere out here. Looks like around the Philippines there in the red flag. Uh, also some movement down south here. Well south of New Zealand. A 5.3 around the Balony Islands region. That earthquake coming in within the last hour. That uh, is the second earthquake down here of a decent magnitude. If we look back here in the last seven days, had a, a little bit of swarming down here, including a six-pointer, 6.3. Uh, also a 4.8 and a more recent 5.3. So we got some adjustment going on down here. Got to watch the New Zealand area following all this activity in the last uh, few days or so. Keep an eye there on New Zealand. New Zealand itself, uh, fairly quiet. A lot of older activity there from late last night, maybe early this morning in the three range. But all this newer activity happening down there across the southern end of the Pacific Plate should put the strain out here across the New Zealand area. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, some decent movement there across the Japan area today. 6.2 earthquake. That earthquake striking up there in the Nankai Trough Zone. We pull up the Oceanic Crest region. You can see this major subduction zone area there that sits on the southern coast here of Japan. 6.2 earthquake striking this morning. Looks like they've had another earthquake uh, earlier this afternoon following that 6-pointer, 4.7 range. So nothing going on there across that area of the Nankai Trough further up north yet. But uh, it, I guarantee you there's quite a bit of strain being produced right now uh, along that area of the subduction zone. So it's looking likely we'll probably see something happen there soon. It's been building up, that's for sure. It's been building up with a lot of strain in that area. A pretty good cluster, as I mentioned here, across the Taiwan area southward. Looks like a 5.9 earthquake striking there in the Indonesia Islands region. Uh earlier uh, this afternoon that earthquake coming in uh, northern end of the Maluka Sea region 22 miles deep there pretty decent size earthquake 5.9 uh, for the uh, rest of the area some earthquake activity around the Burma region that's the Myanmar area that's had that uh, 7 point uh, well that 7.6 earthquake here a few days back Alaska, 5.5 up there around the Aleutian Trench. That earthquake coming in earlier today. There's that uh, earthquake striking up here. Fairly shallow, 5.5 along the Aleutian Trench there. That's a, a major subduction zone area. It does look like, though, and I mentioned this probably a couple weeks ago, how we've noticed uh, an increasing... Uh, likelihood of some larger activity here across the western edge here of the Aleutian Trench. A lot of movement here in the past couple months working its way along the plate boundary, along that subduction zone with a lot of newer activity finally starting to show up here in this seismic gap zone. This is a seismic gap zone that really hasn't seen any earthquake activity in a little while, uh, at least in terms of larger movement. And the slip rate out here is actually quite higher uh, across this region compared to uh, other areas out here so uh, I wouldn't doubt if we see some larger activity than the 5.5 that's striking uh, so watch this region right here obviously as we're working our way to the southwest the pressure out here greatly increases along the Crow Kamchatka Trench that's just a general strain that transpires out here uh, in this zone right here that's a Crow Kamchatka here's the Aleutian Trench notice the uh, slip right here increasing as we go westward here along that uh, subduction zone. So uh, keep an eye on that boundary. That's the uh, uh, Aleutian Trench area, also the Kurokam Kamchatka Trench, and then Nankai Trough. This whole area looks like it could be getting ready for some uh, larger earthquake activity. Uh, into the Pacific Northwest, one earthquake way up into Washington. That is a 19 mile deep 2.1, more than likely associated, associated with the Cascadia subduction zone there which sits just offshore here. Uh, let me check the trimmer map uh, right now. Stand by for a second while we check out the trimmer. 
not volcanic trimmer, but Cascadia trimmer. And there's not even a trimmer count to be observed here. Interesting. Nothing showing up today. Yesterday, there was nothing as well. So, I don't know. Sometimes these go offline and, and we don't know about it. It's just weird how nothing came up at all for the trimmer. Even though we're getting some earthquake activity up there. Uh, some movement also showing up here around the Mount Hood area. Beautiful volcano there in Oregon. A couple of smaller earthquakes there at the southern flank of the volcano. Nothing major going on there for now, though. Uh, Northern California, a couple of smaller earthquakes there, including a 2.8 earlier this afternoon off the plate boundary. Been quite active out here recently across Northern California. Uh, for the rest of the area, uh, some movement around the Hayward Fault, that earthquake there from late last night, 2.8, right just off the Hayward Fault. Not a good location. Um, further down south, Southern California, really not seeing anything major going on. The 2.5 map and above, well, there's a 2.8 near Bradley, California. That is off the San Andreas Fault to the west, just around the uh, creeping segment, just, just to the west of the creeping section there of the San, San Andreas Fault. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a little bit of activity there around the Hebgen Lake Estates. That uh, from this morning and... Yeah, it looks like most of it's from this morning. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone Seismogram Overview where they finally added some of those earthquakes. Earlier this morning when I was doing the update, they only included the one earthquake. And, you know, these guys obviously watching my videos. Quite a few uh, of the geologists watch my videos here on YouTube. And it looks like they went ahead and added a couple more of the earthquakes after I mentioned that they only added one in that sequence of events there across the, uh, uh, the seismograph there. I think there's a little bit more, but hey, at least they're including some of those events there uh, observed there across Yellowstone. But um, it looks as though, you know, and that was this morning there around Hebgen Lake. It almost looks like we got a new swarm going on. But further inland here across the Yellowstone Caldera, look at this here around Upper Falls, Mary Lake. Hello. Look at that. A little bit of earthquake activity here in the last couple hours there. Uh, Mary Lake appears to be the source of the earthquake activity with at least probably 10 to 15 earthquakes there showing up um, around the north central area of the Yellowstone Caldera. The Yellowstone Caldera right there in the black outline here. There's Yellowstone Lake, but this is a super volcano caldera. Okay, that's uh, obviously interesting activity. Uh, nothing big. These are generally at least looking at one maybe a two-pointer. Maybe that's a two-pointer there, but uh, quite a few smaller ones. Nothing Nothing showing up here as far as the recent activity there across Yellowstone for now. But the way they have it set up here uh, for Yellowstone is that nothing will come through across the USGS map unless it's above 2.5. Then the earthquake preliminary data system will pick up on it and report it here on the map. But these earthquakes that are striking underneath 2.5 magnitude will not be reported until human review tomorrow morning. So we'll see what they have uh, as far as uh, the say-so in those earthquakes happening here in the last few hours. Nothing big, but just some interesting activity how it moved eastward there. Uh, Midland. Midland, Texas getting hit with some uh, some earthquake activity out there. I guarantee you there's a lot of gas and oil fields out here. A lot. I, I mean, I talk about this probably too much, but there's too much oil fields out here. There's a lot of oil fields uh, in this area of Texas, out there in the Permian Basin region. If you got oil field rights, man, you're rich. Definitely uh, got a lot of oil underneath this area. Uh, let's see what we have here across the Earthquake 3D globe. Some movement down here across this area of the uh, Indian Ocean, it looks like. A couple fours. Nothing major across the Mediterranean for now. Uh, South America, some earthquake activity down there in the 3 and 4 range. Nothing major going on. Uh, just watch New Zealand here, though. I think, you know, with this 
with this migration of earthquake activity here recently over the last couple of week or last week uh the strain has to be increasing here across the new zealand area so keep an eye on that uh it's obvious there 3.6 up in alaska uh iceland man we got uh let's see what we got here for iceland activity we'll go over here to live view um nothing major going on there's the grindavik area over here the last fisher event was right here north of grindavik within the uh, protective barrier uh, earthquake activity around Iceland has been uh, fairly consistent here. Let's go ahead and refresh this, make sure we got the most recent data. We got uh, 241 earthquakes here in the last two hours. So that's still a considerable amount of earthquake activity. A lot of it up north, way north. This is much further north than what we've seen here in the last Erup the last few eruptions, the last numerous eruptions since 2023. So migration of magma uh, is drifting way northward. Uh, we did not deplete the amount of magma um, as we should have. So there's still a lot below. There's actually a lot below the area. So approximately 90% of the magma that had accumulated in the magma chamber beneath the Safart Singhi area um, since the end of the previous eruption was back in December last year has already transferred into the dike that formed on April 1st. So that's the dike is the area just below the surface and most of that activity is much further north now, uh, north of the craters area. Uh, over time, the likelihood of a new eruptive opening forming along the dike is decreasing though it cannot be rolled out due to ongoing micro seismicity in the area. So this is obviously a new event compared to what we have seen here since 2023, the end of 2023, where it's almost been consistent, you know, east of the Savarts, east of the uh, power plant in the crater row area, north of Grindavik. But this time we got, uh, you know, there's a newer, here's the most recent activity there. Start of, this is the Grindavik area. Um, protective barrier is going to be right uh, roughly about here, I believe, around that region. That's, notice the lava flow, and the, and the former lava flow is being diverted away from the town, away from that community of Grindavik. So it started up here in the north, and then uh, we got an opening down south here. Uh, that kicked up there. Nothing in the town yet. This was a former one back in uh, January of last year. Last year, I remember that. So, um, but most of the activity, it looks like the uh, magma intrusion is headed way north. So this is an interesting scenario. You know, to see what happens following this. There's still a lot of earthquake activity happening, and most of it is north. Uh, but they're still quite a bit south and over the the entire area. Nothing like what happened out here uh, in the last couple of days where we've seen a broad scale elevated seismic event of thousands of earthquakes. But, you know, it's still a developing uh, situation out there. We'll continue to check back on that. Uh, flare threat still remains elevated and we're still getting bombarded by protons. What's going on here? Look at that. The northern and the southern polar regions there. Crazy. This is like the third day in a row. No major solar flares here in the last 24 hours. This looks like some sea flare activity. Uh, the latest UV filter here shows our area of interest. This is my main source here that we could see some X flare activity happening soon. Uh, is uh, flaring. Notice that magnetic arch, magnetic loop. It may not look like that here in the image, but it it's raised up there, and they're looping here from the. Uh, polarities of that uh, uh, sunspot region 4048 so let's look at the magnetogram image beautiful beautiful complex sunspot right here um, and it's it's still growing that's a massive coverage area and it is in prime location here to where you know it's almost centered disc here of the sun almost earth facing but of course if anything does blast off here we could get uh, resulting CME, the effects of the CME, 
Uh, but I think here in a couple days, uh, you know, that may give us more of a chance of seeing something more earth directed. 4048. Uh, I'm issuing still a 25% chance there for an X flare. These guys have dropped their flare threat for some reason, even though I don't see any uh, degrading in that sunspot. Look at that. That is a massive sunspot and getting bigger. So I'm not, I don't know why he downgraded it, but that's what it is. Uh, 40, 48, but I'm sticking with the 25% chance for an X flare. Uh, M flare around 70% chance or so. Keep an eye there on 4048. It's currently flaring. It's, it looks like it's about ready to pop off something there. Uh, some aurora forecast. Some a little bit of aurora activity here in the coming nights. It looks like I, nothing big. I mean, there really hasn't been anything produced there, so I'm not for sure why they're issuing a G1 class storm. Okay, just is it like an abracadabra magic trick? Uh, I don't know, but I don't see any reason for issuing a G1 class storm. But uh, that's what they're showing on here for some reason. Maybe from the Corona Hole, 27? Could be, right? But that's a that's a rinky-dink little sunspot or a, a Corona Hole there. It's uh, now past the Earth-directed view. And uh, that's what it looked like here when it was Earth-directed. But that's that's very measly. It's not even, not even worth mentioning, let alone a G1 class storm like they're showing on here. All right. Uh, wow. I'm looking at tornado activity all across my social media network. Still seeing a high risk out here tonight. Uh, big time tornadoes. Talk about tornado outbreak. I think today was, uh, it was qualified as a tornado outbreak today. Uh, that's going to continue through the evening, folks. Uh, you got to be on guard. Uh, 19 reports of tornadoes today all across the Arkansas area. This this whole general area where they issued the high risk. Big time threats out there. So it's uh, going to continue through the evening. Big time tornado threat. Wind and hail threats in there as well. This will eventually work its way to the east tomorrow. Uh, taking with it that tornado threat and whatnot. But it's still, uh, still going to remain quite active out there tomorrow. So... A lot of damage out there being reported from tornadoes today. I've seen massive, big, huge tornadoes um, on some of the Storm Chaser page, pages. Excuse me. So hopefully everyone's safe out there. Just be on guard. Uh, no major earthquake activity out there noted across the seismograph stations for now. I'll just kind of watch things and see how it goes. we got... Uh, you know, some obvious locations to watch. New Zealand following this movement down south. The Nankai Trough up here, up here obviously getting strained with all the activity around it. A 6.2 just at the southern end. Uh, a lot going on out here. And uh, we could see uh, activity stir up anywhere. California pretty quiet right now. Uh, but that's, you know, it just... It comes and goes in terms of seismic activity increasing out there and decreasing. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. I'm going to call it a night. Hope everyone has a good one. We'll see you guys back out here for the Thursday morning update. And then check it out. Friday's literally right around the corner. It's pretty awesome, right? Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here tomorrow.